I'm of the first generation um, Rambo fans. You know, I, I grew up with it. Um, I was a fan before I ever even imagined of being in this business. So to actually be on a Rambo set and be with Sly, um, you know, it's one of those uh, things I can, I, can, I can cross off my bucket list. So <laughs> it's very gratifying for me. Sly is one of those few actors still around that everybody knows and everybody's seen and everybody gets pleasure out of working with. Um, and he's, he's, if you see him work, he's very giving with, with other actors and makes them feel um, very at ease with him. Rambo is a very loyal character and he's a very a uh, straightforward character and his beliefs and, and what he thinks. Um, in the other Rambos, he was sort of always um, put in a situation or sent into a situation or forced into a situation um, that he, he, he had to write. This one, I mean, it's, it's, it's more obvious than any. This is the first time it's personal, you know. Um, they, this is basically his daughter or daughter-like figure in his life that he's never had. So, you know, I think anybody, especially if you're a, a parent, but I think anybody can relate to the fact that if, you know, something, anything happened to, to your kid, it would just trigger, it would pop that lid all open, which is what it does. I think the humanity in this movie, um, and the way this character uh, has evolved in its humanity, I think, is very important. Um, uh, you can you can see how far his life has gone, uh, and how far his past has taken him to this point. Um, so I think uh, it's a it. There's a journey that 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 you can read hopefully in this film. Um, that, you know, um, even if, and if you watch the others, it's better to, to sort of understand um, where this character uh, has ended up um, in this part. Um, loyalty, uh, humanity, um, uh, and family. I mean, I, I, I think this is the first time Rambo deals with um with family as an issue uh and we've never seen the family theme in his lifetime before um and to to actually see him in this kind of family i think it's maybe unexpected but it's very rewarding Maria Pilar Beltran is a lovely, lovely Mexican woman, strong woman, worker woman. And then, uh, with the pass of the time here in the ranch, he will be part of the family. Um, I think Maria Beltran is a um, so wonderful example, like a Mexican woman. Maria uh, began to work here in the ranch since he was 20, and then he, she became, she became to be part of the family. Well, I think everybody loves superheroes. Not only superheroes with uh, extraordinary and amazing uh, uh, powers, we love human superheroes. And I think Rambo is this kind of superheroes. It's a, human superhero. We thought like um, people in the world that we need someone who help us, someone who try to fix the um, misunderstanding, the bad things in the world. And I think Rambo is this kind of superhero. He 
try to fix the horrible things that happen to uh, innocent people. We need this kind of superheroes all the time. I read the script and I really like the story because it's not only an action movie, it's a movie about the um, origins of this superhero, the origins of this human, uh, this lovely human, you know, this touching human. And I really love this uh, script because the relationship uh, in the script between Maria and Rambo is lovely. And I say yes, of course. There is such a core audience for these Rambo films. It's such an I iconic character, and and I mean it, it goes back, you know, almost 30 years. And, and during that time, there has always been a demand for John Rambo. There's something about Rambo that that kind of sits in the American psyche, and and, and Americans can relate to, and something very patriotic about that character. Something about an underdog who has gone through trials and tribulations and has always managed to survive. And I think that character is a character that a lot of people can identify with and, uh, and feel for. It's, it's not, you know, some kind of comic book character where you don't understand um, their psyche. Uh, Rambo is, is a man with flaws, a man with sort of a checkered past with, with issues having to do with what he's gone through his life, all kind of, you know, wrapped up in, 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 in a human being. And, and I think the audience identifies with that. He's not a cookie-cutter character. He's, he's somebody who is always kind of changing and evolving throughout the franchise. So for me, I, I, we all knew that, that there would be a demand to see him at least one final time and in, in a different stage in his life. We, for the set of Rambo's Ranch, what we, we needed to find a very specific setting, a very specific location, and we looked in a lot of places, but you know, Rambo is a character, and, and the ranch itself, the house, the barn, the forge, the tunnels, all those are very Rambo-specific. And you can't just go out and search and find all of that in one location or even two or three locations. So what we did was we approached it from, let's first find the piece of land, the piece of land that will match and will will basically say something about Rambo's character and where he is, a sprawling piece of land surrounded by beautiful mountains, a place where he can go and live out the rest of his life in peace. And then to build on that, then we would build what is the kind of house he would, he would live in. You know, are there horses, which there are, corrals, he's now into, into you know, the reigning aspects of, of the horses. He's, he's into doing his, his hand labor, all, all, all the stuff that kind of keeps him ticking and, and things that give him purpose. So we found this location in, in Sofia a beautiful piece of land where we could build the house and build the barn and it was a complete build and build the tunnels everything so that we could we could reflect that as part of his character one of our challenges for this shoot was while we w we decided we would do the ranch building here and the tunnels and 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 most of the action here because Bulgaria is very easy to get that done, and you get it done with, with, you know, big production value. We also needed uh, a a Mexican look for the for the Mexican part of the story, which Bulgaria doesn't have. Um, and we were we were 
we were looking for the places we thought, well, maybe at first the idea was to go to Mexico, but that would have really fragmented the shoot and taken us out of Europe, and, and, and there were scheduling issues with actors, and, and we thought, well, where could we possibly go in Europe to do this? And it was Spain, but Spain itself, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of the Mexico elements, particularly the landscapes. And on top of that, we also needed some Arizona-type landscapes. So somebody told us, well, you should check out Tenerife. It, it's, it's a great lo location. It, it, it's an island. And, and at first I thought, an island? But how many looks can an island have? And then I went to Tenerife, and, and I saw not only, not only the architecture, the buildings, it, 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 it's Spanish, and it's Latin, and, and, and it fits perfectly for Mexico. But on top of that, Tenerife is just an amazing island in terms of the variety of landscapes and looks you have. You can be on the beach, uh, in the morning and and by 11 o'clock you're driving up a mountain and you find yourself in the most incredible green pine forest that you've ever seen and then you go up a little f further and you're in Arizona desert real rocky Arizona desert with the Arizona red and and the mountains and, and you go up even a little further and then it's almost like you're on the moon the surface of the moon so it's it's an amazing place to shoot a movie you can shoot you know, almost any landscape there that you can think of. And, and even snow, by the way, at the top of the mountain. But um, it was just such a perfect fit for this movie. We needed two guys who could play brothers and who could play really kind of despicable brothers who, who have no regard for human life, who the sex trade and the sex trafficking is is just a business. It's a twenty billion dollar business, but for them, it, it's all about the goods, and and they had to be this way in order to trigger Rambo into action because nothing was going to pull Rambo from them. And we found these two guys, and they are just amazing actors. If you look at their body of work, they they can play you know they they can play good guys, but when they decide to play you know, these villains, you are just like, oh, you hate them, and you want Rambo to go after them. And, and so the chemistry there was perfect. Victor Martinez is, is one of the bad guys. I mean, he's one of the padrotes. Uh, they have an organization with his brother, and he, they are trying to introduce a lot of, uh, of, of these girls into into U.S. or into Europe, and he's one of the bad guys in this movie. I think it's 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 when when Sylvester told me that it, this is gonna be called The Last Blood. I was like, whoa, are you sure? And he told me, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and then I, I, I told him, man, you need to show all of them, all your blood. So, so let's see what happened. I think it's going to be his, his last punch, but it's going to be a very destroyed punch. When I was a boy, uh, my father didn't like us to see violent movies. So uh, we had to sneak out, and this made it more exciting. I mean, to see Rambo was like kind of clandestine. And I used to go with my friends, and, and for the people of my age, I mean, I'm from 70, 75, we all saw these movies, Rambo, um, the, the movies with Schwarzenegger, and we are like, it's part of our culture. When I read it, I thought it was a very different Rambo. More, we can find a more uh, wiser man, 
a more emotional Rambo with a big heart. Uh, and I think it's the deepest story in emotional terms. I mean, emotionally, it's, it's, it's a different kind. You have the violence, you have the war, you have everything you need to uh, in a Rambo movie. But I think it's more, yeah, philosophical movie. Uh, Oscar is one of the best actors in Spain, so he can do whatever he wants. He has a mischievous uh, um, look, and I think this is a good thing for Victor. It's difficult to, to talk about this because he's Sylvester Stallone. Even when he's here, he is Sylvester Stallone. So you are all the time thinking you're talking to Sylvester Stallone. But he, he's able to, to make this disappear. And he talks to you and he tells you stories about his life and, or whatever. And suddenly you see the, the guy, the person, the, 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 the actor also. When you're working with an actor who is we're going to see the creator of this role, of this franchise, because he is the, the soul of this franchise. And you listen to him, and you don't need to be directed. You listen to him. Okay, I understand. He's an actor. He's a guy who has... He wasn't the first choice, or the second choice, or the third choice for this role. He told me that. And he... He did the role when everybody didn't want to do it. And we have a myth, because Rambo is a myth. Stallone is another myth, but Rambo is a myth. So he created that. And he created another myth, who's Rocky. So I don't know how many people, how many actors in, 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 in Hollywood have made that because he's not only the actor who played Rocky and Rambo, he's the, the creator of the roles. And I love the actors that are creators. Well, you try to think of something that is relatable to the audience. And uh, in Rambo 2, it became a one-man show, basically him showing his prowess. And then the same thing sort of in the third one under the guise of saving your friend. This one, it's, it's truly trying to find a an end. Where does the warrior go? He realizes that his job is to protect and, and that's the only thing he's good for. And, but he knows if he's pushed, if something happens that's traumatic, he's going to revert back. And that's the last thing he wants. He, he just knows that the only thing that he loves in the world is taken away, then he's going to bring vengeance, he's going to bring suffering, he's going to bring death, and there's nothing they can do about it because he welcomes it himself. No man is an island. It's the worst dilemma, one of the worst diseases that strikes mankind is loneliness, isolation, abandonment. And that when you have that, and it's so precious, that there's nothing you would do, not do, to sacrifice yourself for that person you love, including going into a burning building. So that's what I'm trying to convey, that even Rambo can't be alone anymore. He, he really needs human contact. He needs love. You know, man is truly split in half. and. You know, Rocky is a, it's a bigger than life celebration of 
the glass is half full. He's just very optimistic and he just will not allow himself to burden other people with his insecurity or his, his lack of success. He just won't do that. Rambo was a tool for a machine, for a military machine. They took a, probably a young man at 17 who was already fragile and put him into a situation so horrible that he never recovered. So he's almost like the Frankenstein monster, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. And it's something that he didn't ask for. The country did, and then basically discarded him. It's an ability to kind of tap into something that is still relevant, that the one thing that will never change in your generation, you're a lot younger than me, and what's coming up in older generations is our emotions. Our heart never changes. It doesn't. It's either broken, it's moved, or you, it's, you feel nothing, but the heart controls it. So if you can write a story, is what I'm saying, that touches the heart, then your audience will, will never abandon you. You only, only do what you know. Don't, I, I, I recommend don't try to go into someone else's backyard and compete with the fellow who, that's his genre. He, he grew up on comic books. This one here grew up on that. Just write about what you know and write about the human condition. Heart, energy, and humor. Heart, energy, and humor. If you can have those three components going, I think you'll have a very successful career. So I play Gabriella, and uh, she is basically a sort of step stepdaughter to Rambo. He raised me. Um, she's very virtuous, very supportive. She understands that he's going through a lot of PTSD, and that's my kind of character. She has a really good head on her shoulders. I'm in search of my real father. I have a lot of questions. I want to know why he left us. Uh, I feel anyone who has grown up with a with a parent that's missing, always would have questions regardless of how good their current parents are. So, uh, yeah, so I had a lot of questions. I step out, I go to Mexico to try to find my father, and then I don't come back. And so my disappearance alarms my grandmother and Rambo, and he sets off to find me because he knows something isn't right. Oh my gosh, he has been so great, so great. He's very receptive to my ideas. Um, he's very passionate on set. It's really good to come into this. This is my first big blockbuster movie, so to come into this with someone who has been working in the game for so long and still have all that passion and just want to just do everything right, it's really refreshing. He's really great to work with. He's very energetic. When we do a scene and he's in love with it, he comes up to us and gives us that feedback. This, this was great when you were you're doing this. He's just very enthusiastic, so he's really essential in bringing that energy up, keeping it there. He's great to work with, honestly. Carmen Delgado, she's a journalist um, who was uh, writing and investigating about sex trafficking and she lost her sister. Um, it looks like the Martinez brothers uh, took her sister. When Carmen and Rambo find each other, they, they are in the same circumstances. Um, they both uh, lost uh, someone important in, her li in their life. So um, they, they have both the same sense of justice and revenge. 
it's not like that kind of character that everyone would love. But why everyone loves Rambo? Because there is something very honorable and a, a high sense of justice. And, and he doesn't want to fight. That's the, the point of this character always, from the first one uh, till the last one. Uh, he rejects to fight and he doesn't want violence around him, but he's always uh, in the middle of circumstances that makes him to, to fight. And so that's why I think that's why everyone loves uh, Rambo. I think that Stallone is a legend. Um, every character that he made, it has meaning for anyone. Um, from Rocky uh, to Rambo to Cobra, I mean, there is something in him inside that transmit uh, strength, uh, something powerful, hope, and, and that's beautiful. And for me, it was always an inspiration. And because when you think, when I thought I was falling, um, you say, wow, it's Rocky is on the floor and everybody's uh, uh, and someone is beating him and he can stand up, I can stand up too. Um, the same with Rambo. Uh, when he was uh, in the first one, for example, uh, uh, around all these guys, everyone wanted to kill him. And, and he said, I don't want to fight. Why do you make me fight? And I don't want to be a bad guy. I'm a good person. And and sometimes you have to, you have to fight to show to the world that you are a good person and you have a good soul. Um, he uh, taught us how to do that in every movie, in every project, in every character. I think everyone's got a bit of Rambo in them, you know. Um, you know, he's kind of he's a loner. He's a he's a person that lives on the edge. Is basically a good person, but when pushed, um, you know, it's the classic revenge, or it's the classic, uh, you know, when somebody's it's a sim it's basically a simple allegory. You know, he's it's you know good versus evil, but he you know he turns into evil. He turns evil onto the evil doers. Um, Rambo's a, you know, it's it's been Rambo's a term that's been coined around the world for military aggression, or it's 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 been you know people have used it, you know, whenever somebody wants to describe a, an aggressive person or somebody that's uh, you know uh, somebody that a killer or a, you know a military um, figure that's. That you know that that doesn't take no prisoners, um, but I think Rambo's. I think it's it's more of a tale of a of a of a man that's just uh, a normal man that got thrown through the mill that served his country and came out the other end a different person. He came out the other end a person that's been uh, troubled. Um, his mind has been you know confused. The, the fog of war. Who's he fighting for? What side he's on? I think a lot of times people think like that in real life. Well, I think he's changed. I think he's he's come to terms. Um, I don't say comes to terms, but I think uh, you know all the years of combat have kind of come to a head in his mind. Uh, I think he's uh, uh, you know he he struggles with post traumatic stress disorder. He's um, he's finally realizing the carnage. And the atrocities that he's seen in the war, and you know, it's it's relevant in today's 
current climate with you know all the you know the satellite wars that we have on and soldiers coming home and you know I don't think uh, post-traumatic stress disorder was really paid attention to other than the last few years I think Rambo in this Rambo I think Sly's addressed that you know with the script he, you know he addresses soldiers coming home from war they don't just come home from war and forget everything so in this last Rambo I think we've I think we've addressed the issues that are you know currently affecting soldiers now I think with Rambo uh, as he's gotten older um, as he's you know settled into uh, like a bucolic Arizona lifestyle things have you know when things have settled down his thoughts have weighed heavily on him and um, you know the flashbacks come over and, and take over his night his uh, dreams and his not become nightmares Hopefully there's a bit of everything. There's a bit of nostalgia in there, you know. Hopefully there's there's a bit of action for the Rambo fans. I mean, he does go Rambo on a lot of people, um, but also it's uh, you know over the years people have taken the journey with Rambo. You know, different generations because it's been. I think the first Rambo came out in 1980. So it's, it, audience, you know, you'll have an older audience. Hopefully that will have seen the first one to a younger audience who will maybe watch the previous movies. But it's 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 like a journey that that takes you through different stages and different um, times in Rambo's life. Different, you know, each movie he's hit some kind of political uh, hot point. Be it Afghanistan, be it um, you know. Uh, 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 drug trafficking, you know, he's gone through a, um, you know, prisoner of war. So it, it, Rambo has always has its foot in some kind of political issue or, or a relevant, you know, topical issue. And this one's no different. So hopefully, um, you know, people will give the Rambo fans what they want to see.